I'm Andy Stevenson and welcome to another episode of A Winning Mindset, Lessons from the Paralympics, brought to you by the International Paralympic Committee and their long-standing partner Allianz. Together, our aim is for these podcasts to help you move forward in all aspects of your personal and professional lives. By hearing from Paralympic stars, you'll be introduced to stories that inspire and change the way you think. Stories of facing life's challenges with confidence, determination and excellence, and the true power of having the right team behind you. If you haven't already, then please do listen to some of the earlier episodes and make sure to subscribe as well wherever you get your podcasts. My guest on this episode is a remarkable young man who is the perfect example of resilience, even while still a teenager. He's gone through a debilitating and paralyzing illness and is now on top of the world in his chosen sport of para canoe. He's Hungarian Peter Pau Kiss. Now, Peter, you're only 17 years old, and this is something we'll come back to a few times. There'll be some teenagers listening to this who are thinking about what they want to be in the future. Well, you're already a European and world champion in para canoeing. Has it sunk in what you've already achieved at such a young age? Hát, nagyon fantasztikus érzés, tényleg. Hát örülök, hogy így összejött. It feels fantastic to be where I am right now, having achieved what I have achieved, and I thank everyone who has supported me on my journey, because it wasn't just down to me that I'm here today. To have enough strength, I needed plenty of support from those around me, and thankfully I had it. Do you still do the things that other 17-year-olds do? For example, are you still following an education of some kind? (laughs) Igen, természetesen. (laughs) Járok. Most középiskolás vagyok, még tizedik osztályos. Yes, of course I do. I am currently in year 10 of a secondary school called Kölcsei Ferenc High School. I study sports, so I'm surrounded by many other students who are enthusiastic about sport. And what about other interests? How much time do you get to relax and enjoy doing other things? What what do you like doing? I don't have a lot of free time, to be honest. I really need to organize my time if I want to do something else. Yesterday the weather was great, so I went outside and played basketball. I love everything that has to do with sports. I also love drawing, so I'm hoping to use my drawing skills, perhaps in graphic design later on in my life. Now I need to ask you about your disability. You're paralyzed from the waist down and use a wheelchair. And that paralysis came about unexpectedly and very suddenly after an illness when you were just eight years old. Tell us about Guillain-Barré syndrome. Hát persze, hát ugye 8 éves koromba történt. Ilyen sure. I was 8 years old when it all started. It was in 2012 at the end of winter. I had an extremely high temperature around 40-42 Celsius. It was a Friday and it lasted over the weekend, so roughly 2-3 days. We called the doctor who initially thought it was flu so we didn't take it particularly seriously. I received treatment and was told to rest, but at this point we didn't think it was anything serious. We waited a week to see if my condition would improve, but instead of getting better, I actually started to feel even worse. My legs started to go numb, and we went to see the doctor again, who then realized there was something wrong and it wasn't just flu. The doctor then referred me to Page Hospital, where they carried out multiple tests. It took another week for them to come up with a diagnosis and provide me with specific treatments. It was a really tough time, not just for me, but also for my family. My mom was by my side all the time I was in the hospital, while my dad and brother were at home taking care of the house, which was difficult for them to cope with at the beginning. I was treated for three months and things started looking up. I felt better and the treatment seemed to work. But then I was referred to a hospital in Zalaegerszeg, in West Hungary, for rehabilitation and further treatment. I didn't like it there. I felt like I wasn't being looked after particularly well. I was left on my own while I was doing my swimming rehabilitation exercises, and my condition started to worsen, and it wasn't long before I was back in a wheelchair. They sent me back to Page Hospital, where the doctors were shocked to see me back again. They tried their best to help me get stronger, but nothing seemed to work. I was there for a good four months, 
and towards the end of the last month, the doctor said it was unlikely that my condition would improve. From then on, they focused on helping me learn to live with my disability. I'll be honest, it's been really tough. Even though I was so young, I had pretty much lost all my friends. I had a really good friend from nursery who I'm still in touch with, and he helped me through those dark times. Did those friends leave you because you had to move away for your treatment and rehab, or because you were now disabled and, and different to them? Hát első sorba inkább emiatt, hogy ugye rehabilitáltak, ugye hát I was away on rehabilitation, a, which was a long way from my school. Plus, I was so young, and at that age, you don't know whether friends would come and visit or not because of the illness. After the rehabilitation ended, quite a few of them got in touch to see how I was, but it didn't last very long. It's terrifying to hear that you had what you thought was the flu. And then just a short time later, you're paralyzed. I mean, it's it's frightening even just to hear that story, let alone go through it. You were only eight years old, of course, but are there any particular moments or feelings you remember from that time? Hát ő nagyon-nagyon rossz volt, mert mondjuk akkor még nem értettem így ezt az egészet. It was awful. At the beginning, I didn't understand, especially during the first week. At first, it's like, great, I don't have to go to school. I was a really active kid when I was younger. I loved to play football. I played in a football team. And I loved running and even won some competitions. I loved being active, so I struggled mentally and emotionally after my condition worsened. I was struggling to process what happened to me. One day I'm fit and active, running around playing sports, and the next day I'm suddenly in a wheelchair. During my time at the rehabilitation center, I was given a lot of steroid injections, which made me put on a lot of weight and changed my physical appearance. It was then that I realized I needed to grow up and accept that nothing will ever be the same again. I had to become more mature, which wasn't easy at all at such a young age. Peter, I'm disabled myself. I was born with my disability. And even though I've lived with it for so many years, too many years than I'd like to admit, actually, but there are still times when I feel angry or upset at not being able to do things. Your disability has come to you very suddenly and actually not that long ago. So are there times when you get angry or upset at things you can't do? Hát ugye, mikor vége volt az egész rehabilitálásnak, When the rehabilitation finished, for about two years I would say, I was really down. I couldn't find myself or where I belonged. On top of that, I was also angry. But then, after meeting people who had the same sort of illness as I had, I learned to accept who I am now. The only thing I don't like is when some people look at me differently because of the wheelchair, but I try to ignore it. Perhaps a bit of a strange question this one, but... Are there ever times where you actually think it was lucky that what happened to you happened when it did? What I mean by that is, could you bounce back a bit more as a child than perhaps you might if you'd become paralyzed as a teenager or even now as an adult? Hát igen, azért ez egy ez egy nehéz kérdés, de de szerintem hát azt tudom mondani, hogy igen, azért That's a really tough volt, question. Akkor... As I was young when I got my disability, I only really have a few memories of being able-bodied. I think it was better that it happened while I was so young, because I had more time to create a new life for myself and adapt to the situation. I think it was much easier for me to get through those difficult times and cope with the situation than if it happened now. So yes, I think I can say I was lucky it happened when I was young. I prefer to say life has had a different path for me. In some way, my illness has helped me develop my personality rather than change it. Before I felt really lonely and didn't know anything about this condition, I kept thinking, why is this happening to me? Why do I have to go through this? But now I understand why. It's so that I can show others that no matter what obstacles you face in life, it's possible to get through it all and still achieve great things. Do you think your illness and disability have made you a stronger person, either mentally or physically, or, or perhaps both? Yes, absolutely. Looking at the physical side, 
I don't think I would have started to do competitive sport unless this happened to me. Definitely not kayaking, which also helps to build great biceps. And also mentally, accepting what happened and moving on, gaining confidence to go out in public, etc., has definitely helped make me much stronger. You definitely have great biceps, that's for sure. <laughs> I urge people to look up photos of you if they don't believe us. And you have displayed incredible resilience through your life. You've talked about it already in this interview. What would you say to someone who's going through tough times to make them see that there may be brighter times ahead? Hát igazán a pont ez lenne, tehát hogy tényleg soha nem adják föl, tehát lehet, hogy yep. abban a jelenleg helyzetben tényleg nagyon szörnyű. Maybe right now things aren't looking bright and promising, and you think you're going through hell, but trust me, things will be better with time. Sometimes you have to fight to succeed, to leave the darkness behind. Don't be afraid to ask for help, because everyone needs help, whether from friends or family, or even professional help, because even I wouldn't have succeeded without all the help I received. And where does your incredible resilience come from? First and foremost, my family and my coach. My coach, Istvan Pruzsina, has been great. I am incredibly thankful he found and introduced me to canoeing and kickstarted my journey. At the beginning, it was hard to organize traveling to Budapest for training, but my family has been by my side throughout to help. Other organizations have helped me, not only with travel and money, but also with the quality of coaching to help me compete internationally. In 2019, gold medalist and world champion Kis Peter Pál representing Hungary, Magyarország. As I'm listening to you, I feel as though sport came into your life and gave you a purpose when you really needed it. You had two years in rehab where you were trying to find your place, trying to find who you were. So how important was it that sport came along? During my rehabilitation, I didn't really feel like myself anymore. But swimming gave me an outlet to expand my energies and channel my positivity. It helped me build confidence. I was swimming for a year, and that's when I met my coach, Istvan, who spotted me during my training sessions. He was looking for potential talent for para canoeing. He thought I had a good physique and swam well, so he asked me whether I wanted to try canoeing, and I thought, why not? I actually thought it would be pretty cool. In 2014, I was training from 7 to 9 p.m. in a swimming pool, which was only 25 meters long, so I had to make quite a few turns in my canoe. I did this for about two years, and by the end of it, I was thinking, why on earth am I doing this? Is it even worth it? But yes, it was. Because two years later, we finally went out to open water to the Danube River, which was a completely different experience. That's when I immediately fell in love with canoeing. From then on, I didn't stop. I've always loved sports, but I finally felt like I'd found myself and who I am because of canoeing. Yes, was, was that a moment, Peter, when you first sat in the canoe on the open water? Was that a moment where you suddenly thought, this is who I am, this is what I want to do, and I'm going to make myself the very best at it? I started competing in 2017 because you can't compete until you're at least 14 years old. It was a marathon competition and I hadn't done long distance canoeing before. I went with a beginner's mindset. The race started off really well for me. The first 300 meters I was actually in the lead. But then I saw all the other competitors catching up with me, even the girls, so I realized it might not work out. It was a bit embarrassing to finish last. Luckily, this didn't affect my confidence. And if anything, it actually motivated me to train harder. Towards the end of 2017, we started to train even harder, and I noticed I was getting better and better. In 2018, I competed in an event to qualify for the World Championships. I had no expectations whatsoever, and my coach and I thought it would be a good experience and also help get used to competing. My time wasn't actually that bad, and even my coach thought I had a lot of potential. It boosted my confidence, and that's when we both decided to focus on reaching the World Championships. 
I trained so hard that season, and I was ecstatic to qualify for the 2019 World Championship, which was in Szeged, Hungary. It's interesting. Some people listening might think you've gone through a terrible ordeal. There's no doubt about that. But you've come through the other side and found something that you love and that you're really good at. They might actually envy you for that. Yes. I'm so happy that I found canoeing. I almost feel like it was made for me. I love water now, but when I was younger, I had a water phobia because I almost drowned when I was young. Luckily, I've managed to overcome my fears. Water and I are officially friends now. Can you put into words how you mentally recover from setbacks or doubts and, and not let them stop you? In all honesty, I still haven't succeeded. It's an ongoing process. I'm still nervous at the start of every competition, but there's nothing wrong with that. At the beginning of my journey, I fell in love with the kayaking community and the love for competing. I have my role models I look up to who inspire and motivate me, and I'm incredibly grateful and thankful for their support. I wasn't particularly confident when I started competing because I was still so young, 14-year-old me competing against adults, so I wasn't entirely sure I belonged. I had to learn so much and understand that hard work and training will pay off eventually. I had a goal in my head and nothing was going to stop me. I kept swimming beside kayaking, which helped me loosen up muscles to make sure I wasn't too stiff. I did struggle with swimming because the chlorine in the pool would make me sneeze and block my nose. But even these setbacks didn't put me off training. I'm a regular in the gym, but again, I wasn't keen on it at first. I felt embarrassed to see other people lifting 100Ks and I'm fiddling around with lightweights. But I knew why I had to train with weights, so I just carried on. It was mainly my determination and the support of other successful paracanoists that helped me stay focused at all times. And boy, have you got the rewards you deserve, winning the world title in 2019 in your own country, in Hungary, and then being recognised as Alliance Athlete of the Month as well. That must have been like a dream to you. Tell us about that time. It's a fantastic feeling. I'd never felt anything like it before. The fact that I could participate in the World Championship in my own country was an incredible experience and it completely changed my life. Having done lots of media interviews, which I really enjoyed, people started to know my name and were interested in getting to know me. They even started to ask for pictures. It was an amazing feeling. All the supporters who attended and cheered for me were fantastic. Literally, it changed everything. I felt like people were proud to know me and I was truly filled with happiness. Ladies and gentlemen, the medalist of the World Championships in 2019. Congratulations. And with the Tokyo Paralympics on the horizon again, how are you stopping all of this success from going to your head? Uh, I mean, how are you resisting a too much too young mentality and keeping your feet on the ground? Things are different now because of the coronavirus. Up until now, we had a plan with my coach and the team behind to balance training alongside school. We told my teachers that my main goal is to go to the Tokyo Paralympics. I kind of felt like I had lost motivation over the summer as the games felt further and further away when they were moved to 2021. But luckily, competing in a few events brought back positivity and motivation into my life. I didn't miss out on any training, and I know what my goal is, and I'm getting closer and closer to achieving it. Even though the Paralympics are not even a year away, I can already feel the buzz it's giving me. And when you're on that start line in Tokyo, I'm sure you'll be feeling even hungrier for gold because of having to wait an extra year. But how much will all of the people who have supported you along the way, the people you've spoken about, your coaches, your family, how much will they be on your mind? And will you almost be wanting to win the gold medal more for them than for yourself? Well, <laughs> 
To be honest, I want to win for both. Obviously, I want to win for myself because I love doing what I do. And it would be phenomenal if I could succeed. But any medal would also be dedicated to my coaches and the people of Hungary. And finally, I've read that if you do get the gold in Tokyo, then they're going to build a statue of you in your village. Is that right? <laughs> yes, there are rumors about that actually happening. Let's see what actually happens. I'm interested to see it myself. <laughs> do you have any preference as to what the statue will look like? I mean, I'm assuming it will be... You and your canoe, won't it? Hát mindenféleképp szerintem kajakba kéne, tehát az vagyok én. Absolutely. It would have to be in my canoe. And that's what will win the gold medal. Absolutely. You'll be like a king with your own statue. You'll be King Peter. Hát remélem is. I sure hope so. Well, thank you, Peter, for being so candid and for speaking, not just about a, a dreadful period in your life, but also how you are now a superstar and a true inspiration. Thank you so much. I hope our paths will cross at some stage in the future. I don't know about you, but I had to remind myself several times during that interview that Peter Palkis is only 17 years old. Definitely one to look out for in Tokyo, but also someone who has such mature things to say about resilience and overcoming setbacks. I hope you enjoyed our chat and learned something along the way too. Please do subscribe to this podcast and listen to earlier episodes. Leave us a review and a rating if you would like. Next week, my guest is wheelchair marathon supremo Manuela Scher of Switzerland, who will tell us the secrets of performance management and staying at the peak of your powers over several years. Speak then. Speak then.